confession of sin is the admission of what we did and the agreement with God that our actions or words were wrong. In a court of law, a person who confesses to a crime is agreeing that he or she did in fact violate a societal standard. And when we confess our sins, we are admitting that we violated God's law. We admit that we chose to to do or to say or to think something opposed to God's will, and we stand guilty before Him. Related to confession is repentance, whereas uh, confession involves admitting what we did was wrong, repentance involves a desire to change course. We not only acknowledge our sin, but take steps to overcome and forsake it. Now, we have to know that confession without repentance is only words. Most people will confess to a sin when caught red-handed, but they may have no intention of changing. Their show of remorse is due to the consequences of their actions uh, and not the sin of their actions. All right? So, for example, John the Baptist preached repentance in preparing the way for the Messiah. Remember in Matthew 3, 8, it says, Bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance. In other words, John counseled his hearers not only to merely confess their sins, but to demonstrate by their actions that they had truly repented of them. The Bible presents two avenues for the confession of sins. First, we are to confess our sins to God. First John 1 John 1.9, it tells us that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Secondly, we are to confess our sins to other, uh, to other believers or to others. Uh, James uh, 5.16 says, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that when uh, so that you may be healed. When we have wronged someone, it is appropriate to confess our wrongdoing so that that person can forgive you. You know, you can basically just seek forgiveness from that person. And several factors can hinder or prevent our confession of sins. One is pride. We don't like to admit that we are wrong. And pride rushes it in to justify and to explain or to blame shift instead of confessing and being forgiven. Just like the Bible says in the book of Proverbs uh, 16 verse 18, it says, Pride, pride goes before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. God resists a prideful person and he tells us this in James 4 verse 6. He says, But he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he said, God resisteth the proud, but gives grace unto the humble. First Peter 5 verse 5 tells us, Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yeah, of all you, be subject to one another. And uh, be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud and gives grace to the humble. Brothers and sisters, we have to understand that confession of sin does little good when it is coerced or insincere because it is not true agreement with God, but a temporary effort or temporal effort to appease a guilty conscience or pacify someone else. Another major factor that uh, hinders the confession of sin is ignorance. In our modern age, people are uh, growing more biblically uh, illiterate and hearts are growing cold towards the things of God. And uh, the neglect of scripture means that many, including professing Christians, are woefully ignorant of God's moral standards. Some indulge their sinful desires with, uh, little, uh, with little remorse. They indulge in all this, preferring to remain in the dark rather than have to confess and forsake their sin. And their attitude is ignorance, is bliss. And they may even resist learning more about God's word for fear it will make them feel guilty about their lifestyle. God holds us accountable for all he has entrusted us, so ignorance is no excuse for confessing our sin to God and being forgiven. 
When we confess our sins to someone we have wronged, that confession should be accompanied by an appeal for forgiveness. Just uh, while we cannot force someone to forgive us, we should always make that option available to them so that they can live free of bitterness towards us. And the uh, The Bible is filled with commands to forgive each other. Think about Ephesians 4.32. It tells us, And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Colossians 3.13, Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Matthew 6.14, For if you forgive men, their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Jesus even gave a step-by-step tutorial in confession and restoration within the church. He told us in Matthew 18, verse 15, He told us this, Moreover, if your brother shall trespass against you, go and tell him this fault between you and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if you will not, he, uh, he will not hear you. Then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, the mouth of two or three witnesses, every one may be established. And if you shall neglect, if you shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. You see what Jesus told us? He explained to us so keenly about what we should do to our brothers and restore them. And there are other times when our sin was not against a specific person. But we can confess it anyway to Christian brothers and sisters in a way of becoming accountable for change. James 5 verse 16, it tells us, Confess your faults to one another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. An old adage said, Confession is good for the soul. And this one is very true. God wants us to live with a clear conscience and a pure heart. He told us in Matthew 5, 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Are you pure in heart? And also Psalms 24, verse 4, it says, He that has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. This is only possible when we regularly confess and forsake our sins, keeping the model of Jesus ever before us. 1 Corinthians 4.16 tells us, Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Paul is pleading with us, be followers of me. At least follow me. Follow me because I'm also following Christ. He told us also in uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1, Be ye followers of me, even I as as I'm following Christ. He never had to confess his sins because he never committed any. But, let me, let me just read to you this, all right? Think about this. In Hebrews 4.15, it tells us, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. It is not really about us. It is basically just telling God we can't do it by ourselves. Our flesh is sinful. Help us, Lord. Yes, we know we can't lose our salvation, but Lord, help us. Help us so that we may do what is right. No one can truthfully say that we don't need to learn how to confess our sins regularly both to God and to other people. We need to so that we can live freely of guilt and of shame. Jesus told us that he did what? He blotted the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Him, Jesus, 
is the one who did this for us and we can be rest assured that uh, when we walk in his ways we'll have a good relationship with him but if we decide to walk in our own ways and we say oh i don't want to hear i just want to do my thing then you can be rest assured you you'll you'll stay in a bad relationship with with him yes we'll not lose your salvation but why stay in a bad relationship with your father and that's the end of our today's bible study lesson hope it was a blessing to you hope you've learned something and remember you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family and please don't forget to favorite our podcast and subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post another bible question if you like to get saved or you need a step by step order of salvation that is a couple of verses to help you in the step by step understanding of salvation or you feel led to support our ministry kindly visit our website kithmuoki.com otherwise i hope to see you in the next one <music>